Warning, this video is for entertainment purposes only. If you decide to build one of these, please do comply with your local, state, and federal regulations in your country. Do not break any of those rules. We might get in trouble, so be careful if you decide to build this one and comply with those regulations. That would be awesome. So let's go ahead and get the video started, shall we? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Everyone's looking for the fastest quad out there. They're looking for something that has maximum power without blowing everything up on the board and your flight controller and the most minimal setup possible. So today I'm gonna to show you what I built that's gonna get you close to that 100 mile per hour range. I'm gonna show you how I built it, what I use. I'm gonna list all the specs and the parts below for you guys in this video. So let's go ahead and take a little closer look that's this super extreme build with Emax 2306 motors, D-Shot 600 ESCs on there, they're 30 amp ESCs, and we used that F4 flame, which is also dampened on there, and the new Runcam Mini. So a pretty nice compilation of parts on here to make this one go as fast as anything you've ever seen. So here it is guys on the bench it's all ready to go all ready to show you all the specs and components and i'm going to go through these one at a time for you so you can build your own and i'm going to show you where stuff solders onto but look at my f4 flame video that i did previously to this one it shows you where everything goes on here and it's super easy to build i can solder up one of these probably in about 25 minutes with all the components on here almost ready to go so it's a super quick build and i did this previously with lumineer products on here i added the four in one esc that they offer and then right above that i did the lux too so that created a two stack stack on this and i wanted to save more space i wanted to lighten it up a little more so what i did was i pulled that stuff off there and i added these little bullet escs on the outside of the arms those are by emax that the 30 amps like i was talking about before uh, so what that did was it frees up more space inside my stack and now i have just a single board in here with osd my beeper hanging off the side there and everything in there that i need and i saved a ton of space up inside here so i could run full size camera no problem i can put my receiver down bottom here and i just have tons more room and then maybe i saved a little more weight by doing this as well so i'll go ahead and weigh this at the very end of the video but i wanted to show you everything that you need to build yours with these specs and walk you through where everything solders on it's very very simple to build uh, i built this yesterday afternoon probably in an, an hour to two hours really super fast now i already did have the frame put together and stuff like that but i just transferred the new components on there uh, very very easy to build so i will go ahead and zoom in a little closer now and i'll show you where everything solders up it is really simple to build now, before we get started, I just want to say I'm not building the world's fastest quadcopter. I know there's faster ones out there, so, you know, don't rip me up in the comments. I'm just showing guys how to build something really extremely fast. Uh, so I've had some guys emailing me and asking me what would be an optimum setup for a super fast race quad. And this frame is ultra fast, especially with these 2306s on here. Extremely fast. Now, before you get started, let's talk about step one. Step one would be taking your flight controller and flashing it up in beta flight adding the latest version on there you don't have to flash it you can leave what's on here uh, and you want to go ahead and set up your receiver in the ports and get it fail safe all set up and ready to go and once you have that done set this to the side now the next step step two is going to be getting your motors and escs ready i always start with that once you have your frame built go ahead and mount your motors on to each arm on each side of this frame and you're going to work with your ESCs next. So go ahead and trim back your wires here. And I made mine about probably about an inch and a quarter long right here coming off the end of the motor. Solder these three points on to the ESC. And it doesn't matter which order they're in, but I usually do them uh, just like this straight across because I can switch these around in BL Heli Suite later if I need to, if the motor's moving the wrong direction. And I did some builds on my channel where you guys can go through that and uh, see how to do that if you look back in some of the previous videos. Now the next step will be trimming these off close up to the flight controller uh, and once you have you don't have to solder these on um, but you will have to solder these two power tabs and the signal wire coming from each ESC 
Now you have a little closer look at this flight board, and I like the flame for a lot of reasons. It is very simple to solder up. It, it, it looks kind of complicated and, and when it's naked and it's bare, when you're just looking at it without all the wires on it. Uh, but I, I guarantee you that it's one of the more simpler all-in-one boards you'll build this year. Uh, very, very easy to solder up. Now, after you have your motors soldered up to the ESCs and your ESCs are on the arms, put the heat shrink over and don't heat shrink it yet. Just leave the heat shrink hanging loose. Uh, and go ahead, there's a little ground wire right here. And you can snip those off or you can remove this ground wire. You don't really need it. Uh, so you're just gonna use this signal wire right here. It's the white one. And you're gonna run that up underneath this black wire and it's gonna to go to S1 right there. That's the signal for motor number one, which is back here. And I usually do my signal wires first, and then I do my power wires coming off my ESCs second. Uh, so go ahead and solder up each one of your signal wires, starting with number one, and then going up here to number two. You'll see it clearly labeled on this board, which is what I love about the, the flame. You'll see S2 right there, and that wire just comes up right there and solders on. Now motor number three is back here, and you'll see that it's also labeled back here. You'll see S3 right here. There's a little bit of solder over it, so you can't really see it very good. But uh, And up on the front here, we have S4. You can see that's clearly labeled S4. You see that white wire coming up. And make sure you do the white wire coming from each ESC to each signal wire. S1, S2, S3, and S4. Now the next step in this build is you're going to pull these ESC wires up, these two power wires, and you're gonna tuck them under the frame a little bit and bring them over this way and snip them off about just a little further than where this tab would be. So go ahead and put some solder on both of these tabs and, and get them ready. Also, you want to go ahead and put some solder on each end of these wires. Now, if you see a little bit of wire sticking out after you put some solder on each wire, when you get it ready to, to put down on this pad, put more solder on there. It should be nice, a, a liberal amount of solder on each one uh, when you go to solder it down. So you can see that it's clearly labeled again, positive here and negative over here on this side. So run your wire up and solder it down into place. And that's motor number one. And you're gonna do the same thing for motor number two back here. Probably could have made these a little bit shorter, but I'm just gonna tuck them down as much as I can close to the frame. Now the next one will be motor number three back here. And you're going to, I'm just gonna move the beeper out of the way. You're going to do the same thing here, very simply solder on the negative here and the positive there. Now motor number four, same again, negative here and positive there. So normally after I get my ESCs all soldered up and the signal wire soldered up, I usually move to do the camera next. So I'm using this Runcam Mini here and the yellow wire is gonna be your signal wire and that's gonna go to this port right here where it says cam and your black wire is your ground wire. So that's gonna go to where you see negative right here on the board and it's just above and to the right of this arrow facing forward on the quad and you have your five volt wire which runs straight to that tab right there so one two three and you'll have your camera wired up very simply straight through this board and this is nice because a year ago we had to normally take this signal wire right here and route it to the vtx and we had to do a little splicing now with these all-in-one boards since i have onboard osd i can bring the camera wires straight to the board uh, without having to splice through to the vtx so it simplifies things quite a bit and next I add my receiver, and this is an SBUS receiver, FR Sky receiver, and I just add this red wire over on the right-hand side. There's gonna be six ports right here, so six different little tabs. And you can run the wire down and through the hole. They're kind of small, but if you want to just put a bead and drop your wire into the bead, it should make a nice contact and get power to your receiver. So you're gonna do the black one here and the red one over on the right, and they're clearly labeled again. If you look at that F4 flame video I did, this is a really simple board, uh, and the signal wire goes over on the right, um, excuse me, on the left-hand side right here. Now the next step is you're gonna wire up your VTX, and this is really simple again. Like, just like the camera, you're gonna take your signal wire down to where it says VTX. You're gonna take your 
five volt line and run it straight to this point right here. It's also labeled and your ground wire is going to go over here. It is kind of close to where the VBAT is, but it's, it's going to be totally fine. I'm uh, just going to use a really fine tip soldering pin when you do this so you don't have any bridging happening. Uh, if you have any solder bleed over to the other tab and make a bridge, you want to separate that before you power it up. And as always, guys, I always recommend using some kind of smoke stopper before you plug in your, your quad for the first time after your build so that you don't fry things. So like I said, this year I'm trying to make a New Year's resolution by adding a beeper on every quad that I fly, and I'm sticking to that by doing this. I took this one off my AR Fun 90. It's a really tiny little beeper, and it has a nice little LED there that flashes when you're in that panic mode uh, and you're looking for your quad. It's kind of nice to have that on there. The overcast days, it makes it kind of nice. You might see it in the grass, but you're going to hear it first. So very important on any build, especially one that you spent a little bit of money on, you just don't want to lose your quad, so make sure you put a beeper on it. But right here you have negative tab here and positive tab. They're right beside each other, and you'll see a B plus and a B negative, negative on this side plus here. You'll see that clearly labeled on the board again. And if you want to add LEDs, these three ports right here are for your LEDs. Now one thing that I'm going to recommend that you guys use is an LC filter from your VTX into your board. This is going to clean up a lot of noise in your system. If you have one of these all-in-one flight controllers, they are great, but you might see a little bit of noise if you just connect your VTX straight to the power right here. So this is a little bit close to the main battery terminals right here, and just to avoid any kind of noise coming from all of this power back here. Uh, I added an LC filter and this is pretty easy to solder up. It has an in point and an out point and you're going to go out of your VTX. Your VTX wires, this two red and ground wire there, are going to go into the inside and then the outside is going to come down and go solder straight to the board. Uh, so it seems a little bit complicated but it's really not. Now the next wire from the VTX is going to be your signal wire and that's just going to go straight down into the board there. Now I also have these posts off so that I can show you the board a little better, but you see that little red ring right there? That is a little paper washer and these are really nice to put in between your board and any type of metal post. I have metal posts coming off the top of the stack and it's very important to, you want to isolate any type of electricity coming up to the very top of your quad. You don't want to make a connection anywhere and short anything out. So I like to use these. So uh, if anyone knows where to get these, I would love to have an extra pack of these because I kind of poached these off another quad that I have, but that's going to be nice. Now also I did raise this up just a little bit by adding one little tiny nut right here. It's this little plastic nut and it makes it just a little bit taller for it to gain clearance above all of this stuff right here so that I can add my receiver right on top of the flight controller. I'm just gonna use a little piece of VHB and stick it down. Okay, so I have the scale on. Let's go ahead and put our upgraded ULX on the scale and see what we get. We get 297 grams, not bad, under 300 grams for something that is super, super fast. Now let's set a Lumineer graphene battery on there with it. And see what we get up to 467 grams total takeoff weight pretty sweet under 500 grams there it is guys look at that is that an amazing looking quadcopter or what can we just have one moment of silence on the channel for this quad this is the closest thing you're going to get to quad porn on this channel this is an amazing build super clean under 300 grams maximum power and you're going to approach the 100 mile an hour range. Pretty amazing quad. I'm pretty happy with everything that came together on this build. It was really quick to build, especially since I was able to get a single stack down there using that F4 flame and these new bullet ESCs out here on the arms. I have a few extras just in case I burn one up. I've been hearing from different people that they do burn up, so uh, just keep that in mind if you're putting them on a build. If you order these ESCs, order five of them, maybe order six, just in case you burn one or two out. Because when you get into really high performance quads, you're going to have some issues at some point. So you're going to need some extra parts on hand. But what an amazing feat of engineering this quad is. 
absolutely amazing. This has been the 100 mile an hour upgraded ULX video. Thanks again for watching you guys. I'm Justin Davis and I will definitely see you on the next one.